everybody. I say praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't it good to be in God's house? What a blessing. We are a blessed people. There's a little girl in a garage sale or yard sale yesterday told me I was a blessing. And, and that just touched my heart. And I said, well, you're a blessing too. And uh, that stuck with me. So I'm saying you're a blessing tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's bless the Lord in song just for a few songs before Brother Steve comes and, and blesses the Lord with us. And uh, we're going to sing It's Amazing What Praising Can Do. Hallelujah. Key of F, brother. Hallelujah. You can stand. Feel comfortable. Get loose. Hallelujah. Well, it's amazing what praising can do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, it's amazing what praising can do. Hallelujah. of Jesus. No more power than in His name. Brother Bain. Hallelujah. Uh, do the offering, brother. 
Well, praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a big praise, y'all. want to uh, thank y'all for coming back out tonight, and uh, hope and pray that some of the rest of them will come on in here, but uh, regardless of what happens, we're going to have church here tonight. Let's remember that uh, uh, Brother is here tonight. We need to take him up a good offering. If you can, get, dig down deep, and maybe let's try to bless the man of God. I know that uh, I don't know what happened this morning, but uh, our offering was probably the lowest offering we've had in, in several, several months, but maybe, maybe in several years. And uh, so uh, there's a problem when you got 80 people and take up $300. That won't even, that won't even pay up. That won't even pay the light bill. But uh, just letting you know that uh, it's important for everybody to give, whether whether it's uh, whether it's a dollar, a penny, or a hundred dollars, or a thousand dollars, whatever it is, it, it's important for people to to uh, to give to support the ministry. It takes money to uh, to run the ministry. Praise the Lord! Just last week we paid twenty five hundred dollars worth of bills. Just last week, believe it or not. So, uh, but thank God we have a church clerk that uh, manages things very well because we're still sitting pretty good. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a big praise offering for that. Ask the Lord to touch us. But uh, so everything you give tonight, uh, if you give cash, we're going to give him cash. If you write a check, uh, uh, you know you can either write it. Uh, uh, to Brother Steve Warren, or you can to, or you can write it to the church. Either way, we'll figure it out. Amen. You write it to the church, you get credit for it at the end of the year. But uh, we love and appreciate you. Let us pray, Heavenly Father. I pray, God, that you reach down your mighty hand and touch this place tonight. Yes. Oh, God, touch your people tonight, God. And we ask you, Lord, to reach down your mighty hand. Oh, God, and bless your people. Bless your people, God, that, to the place that they'll stand up and listen to you, obey you, God, to do what you've asked us to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a big praise. Often he's worthy to be praised.
see Jesus telling Thomas. Look at them nail scars in my hands. Praise the Lord. I know that Jesus is the man. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a big praise offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've been looking for this, looking forward to this for several months. I, I heard through the grapevine that Brother Steve, uh, it just seems like we just pick up where we're left off when we st start talking, but uh, heard through the grapevine that he had some issues going on and. Uh, and I had been praying for him, and I and, and I heard right, praise the Lord. But we're glad God touched him. He's up and preaching and, and doing what God's called him to do. You can't keep a good man down, I'll tell you that right now. Let's give Brother uh, Steve Warren a big God bless you tonight. Well, he's a good God tonight, see? Worship with me on this old song. It's a country where Love's white light Shadows deep end On an days Where nights Will never be Well it's a city Where no storm clouds they're ever going to gather How many is glad for us? For this is just What heaven means To me Come on What will it be When we get old Think about it tonight And rejoice the glassy sea. Oh, and we'll join our loved ones and crown Christ over Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. Right here, without a doubt, is my favorite verse. I like this. When at last I'm gonna see the face of a man called Jesus, before whose image all of the loves they're gonna have to flee. Oh, and when they crown him. Lord of all, how many of church say I plan on being there? Thank God. For this is just what heaven means to me. If you're glad you're going tonight, sing it loud. What Praise the Lord one more time. How many in here say he's done something for me? Been a good God all the time. Amen. Worship with me tonight. Thank you, Jesus. I hope y'all still like country gospel here. In the Bible, there was a leper who was one of the ten. Listen. He had to come back to Jesus. 
and thank Him once again for healing His body and making His sin no more. Yes, once again, He just had to praise the Lord. Let me come to praise Him tonight. I just have to praise the Lord one more time. For He picked me up from where I was. Yes, He did. And He changed my life. Yes, He opened up the eyes of a sinner who was so blind. And I just have to praise the Lord one more time. Is that why y'all came tonight? Let me hear you say amen. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We give you honor and praise. Listen. Yeah, now there's that story about a woman That the crown was about the stone They had already judged her For the sins that she had done Oh, but Jesus said, I don't condemn you Just go and sin no more and she went on her way of praising the Lord. Hallelujah. And I just had to praise the Lord one more time. Cause he picked me up from where I was. And he changed my life. Yes, he opened up the eyes of a sin who was so blind. And I just have to praise the Lord one more time. And I just have to praise the Lord one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Had some folks said they wanted to hear that train. One of them brought the train with me. I don't leave without the train. I take it everywhere. Of the souls that are lost and are dying, will the sin only evil remain? Watch out, my brother, for that alone black train. And you can look to the head, I look into the sky. Finding redemption, stare it back into your eye. Come on, that's it. There is protection and there's peace the same. Burning your ticket for that a long black train. Everybody sing. Thank God there's victory in the Lord, I say. Victory in the Lord. It pain to the Father and the power of Jesus' name. Don't go riding on that long back. And there's an angel. 
Asian hair on that long black train. He's a big and you wonder if the ride is worth the pain. He's just waiting on your heart to say, let me ride on that long black train. Come on, sing. Thank God there's victory. And Lord, I say, victory and law. I say, thank to the Father and His holy name. Don't go round on that long Coming from a mile away Sounding so good But we've all got a stand way That train's a beauty Making everybody stay But it's only destination Here's the middle of nowhere Come on, sing it out Thank God there's victory And the Lord I say Lord, I said plain to the Father and His holy name, don't go riding on that long black train. I said plain to the Father and the power of Jesus' name, don't go riding on that long black train. Watch out, my brother, for that long black train. You see the devil, he's arriving that long. Somebody told me, said, you're going to wear out. I said, I'd rather wear out than rust out. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just want to finish raising them kids before I kick over. But it's good to be with you tonight. I got two brand new CD projects out there on the table. If you don't care, I'd like to sing some songs off of that. 
I, uh, I've never recorded a funny song in my life, never. I'm not that I'm against them, comedy song, never, because I like to laugh. The Bible said the joy of the Lord is your strength. <clears throat> I just never had through the years um, anybody to give me a comedy song. And church people, if they ever need to laugh, it's right now. Say amen. You're living in a bad time. You need to laugh. You need the joy of the Lord, which has produced strength for you. But, uh, Brother Bain, you'll be able to go along with this. When I was raised in the mountains of southwest Virginia, every time they bring the evangelist in for revival, my grandmother was a little Cherokee Indian, and she'd say, Well, feed him. And you know what you're going to have? Chicken. Chicken. We'll feed him, and usually that evangelist would bring five of the meanest young ones you've ever seen in your life. And the reason why they were so bad, they played with the deacons' boys. But anyway, I remember that, and uh, had a writer send me a song that talks about it. And Brother Bain, you can't deny it, you are a chicken-eating preacher, man. Yes, you are. Anybody, how many preachers I got in here tonight? You like chicken, brother? You preacher? You a chicken eating singer, ain't you? Glory to God. You like chicken up there? Anybody like it up in the balcony? Glory to God. Did you bring a rooster with you, Lynn? Yeah, let him out. Let's sing about it tonight. Here we go. Take a listen. When I was young, it seemed to me that preacher was ten feet tall. He'd shake the lights and knock the dust right off of that church house wall. He'd romp, snort, and stomp his feet. Man, that preacher could preach. But Goliath couldn't hold a candle to the way that man could eat. Well, that chicken eat preacher man, his wife and five kids used to come for Sunday dinner. Back when I was a kid, they'd sit there eating fried chicken, a licking their fingers to the ball. I knew that preacher was a beef until all the chicken was gone. Now mama used to tell me, son, you better mind your P's and Q's. And don't take but one piece of chicken, boy, and a brother man over there gets through. I knew right then how old Blue felt sitting waiting on a bone. And I'd say, why in the devil don't Brother Bain and the family go on home? Lord, you delivered Jonah from the belly of that whale. And the story of old Daniel and all those lions we know so well. You saved the Hebrew children from the fiery furnace heat. But how are you going to save a little red rooster when Brother Bain over there gets ready to eat? Well, that chicken eat preacher man, his wife and five kids used to come for Sunday dinner. Back when I was a kid, they'd sit there eating fried chicken, a licking their fingers to the palm. I knew that preacher was a thief until long the chicken was gone. That sound like the pastor up here. <laughs> oh yeah, it gets better, just listen. Yeah, buddy, here we go now. Well, all afternoon I pray to God for the preacher to go on home. Because there was nothing left to poor little Red, but only his bones. Me and old Blue, we had sat there wondering, see, seeing who had made the first move. Brother Bain, he laid his hands on them. He said, my dog needs feeding too. That chicken eat preacher man, his wife and five kids, used to come for Sunday dinner. Back when I was a kid, they'd sit there eating fried chicken, a licking their fingers to the ball. I knew that preacher wasn't leaving till long chicken was gone. I knew that preacher wasn't leaving till long the chicken was gone. Give your pastor a nice God bless you. Woo. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, sir. I've never done one till now, but uh, it seems to be going over pretty well. We've, we've actually got uh, a couple of chicken places interested in it. 
Chick-fil-A is one of them. Bojangles is looking at it. Popeyes. KFC, but we really want Chick-fil-A to get it. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Uh, I hope Brother Bang don't mind. I think one of the last times I was here, I had uh, been working on a CD project, and, and I'm going to preach just a little bit, but if you'll let me sing a few. I was working on a CD project, took a lot of old rock and roll and country songs and turned them around and made them gospel. You remember me talking about that? Well, I got that project done. I had a preacher tell me one time, here lately, he said, you can't do that. I said, I've already done it. <laughs> and already seeing people get saved from it. Just before George Jones died, I had a conversation with him. And you know, George was a little man with a great big voice. And I said to George, I said, George, I took one of your biggest hits and got it saved. He said, you did what? No, let me say it like he said, well, uh, you did what? I said, I took one of your biggest hits and got it saved. He said, well, which one? I said, he stopped loving her today. He said, what are you going to call it? I said, I'm going to call it He Stopped Death, Hell, in the Grave. He said, when you get that thing down and get it recorded, I want to hear it. Old George took his flight before we could let him hear it. But would you all like to hear it tonight? Well, you've not convinced me. How many, how many, oh, I love it. How many remember the country version? I like the country version. You'll like the gospel version. Take a listen. I believe you'll like it. He said, I loved you, so he died. He told us he'd come back in time. And as the years go slowly by, that still preys upon my mind I keep his picture on my wall Of how he hung there on that cross Yet he still loved us through it all Knowing he'll come back again Help me believe he's coming back. I got my Bible by the bed, and I do. It's dated 1982. That's what I got to say. I have his word written in real. And every single I love you. Oh, listen. I'm gonna go see him just any day. Y'all going with me? Oh, and I'll never shed one tear. I'm all packed up to go away. I'll shout his praises loud and clear. He stopped in hell and the grave. Yes, he did. He rolled the stone back from the tomb. And soon he'll carry his bride away. He stopped in hell and the grave. Oh, listen. You see, Mary came to see him just one last time. Oh, we all wondered if she would. And you know, church, it keeps running through my mind. Oh, this time, this time, Jesus defeated hell for good. Thank God. How many know he done it? He stopped at hell and grave. He rolled the storm back from the tomb. And soon he'll carry his bride away. He stopped at hill and the grave. 
him tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I've had people tell me, you can't do that. That's You taking them honky-tonk songs and bring them into church. There ain't nothing honky-tonk about that. It ain't the music. Somebody shout, it's the words. Shout amen. Y'all like to hear another one I took and turned around? You want to hear a little bit of Johnny Paycheck, Born Again? Come on, let's sing it to them tonight. Here we go. Let's do it. Yes, sir. Well, I said, friend, you can't take him, he's all I got. You can't take God's love away from me. I hear me talking to your friend. You can't take him, he's all I got. He's all you need to. He's everything in this life I'm ever going to need. For he's my life, somebody say mine too, when I needed to live. He's everything to me in this life that life can give. You see, Jesus is my living water when I needed that drink. Why, he's the first thought in my mind each time I try and think. And I said, friend, you can't take him, he's all I got. You can't take God's love away from me. I hear me talking to your friend. You can't take him, he's all I got. You see, he's everything in this life I'm ever going to need. How many tonight says, Lord is my all in all? Let me see. How many says, He's my living water? He's my strength and my joy. He's my today. He'll be my tomorrow. He's strength for the journey and power for the fight. All you got to do is hold to the unchangeable hand of a living God. Hallelujah. I'm in love with Him tonight. How about y'all? Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Listen. For he's my joy, see your joy, oh that I love to feel. He's everything to me in this life that's really real. You see, he's my love, the only real love I know. Let me tell you what he'll do. For he can wash you in his precious blood. Make you white as snow And I said, friend You can't take him, he's all I got You can't take God's love away from me I hear me talking to your friend You can't take him, he's all I got I said, he's everything in this life I'm ever going to need For he's everything in this life I'm ever going to need I want to sing one more then I'll preach a little bit for you tonight I sung him songs and I've seen drug addicts get saved I had an old boy come up to me one night and he said, I used to fight to them songs. I said, you didn't fight to these songs. <laughs> well, I fought to the one, that other one. I said, what other one? I didn't know there was but one now. I've done recreated it. <laughs> he cried and stood at the altar with me. He said, how can I get free? The sound of that song picked a man and pulled him to an altar. And Jesus delivered him and set him free. I told a preacher one night, he was criticizing me over that song. I said, don't put your God in a box. Your God's too big to be put in a box. Say amen. He's bigger than what people can anticipate or analyze. Lord, help me get down on my knees so I can get back on my feet. Worship with me tonight and then we'll preach a little bit. Come on. He's 
Stumbled in the front door, never been inside the church. He was looking for some answers, God knows how long it searched. He's trading in his old life, grace is just a step ahead. When he knelt down at the altar, he looked at me and said, Friend, I've hit rock bottom, not a nickel to my name. I've thrown away what God gave me. I've got only me to blame. You see, every day is a bad. Your heart is incomplete. Lord, help me get down on my knees so I can get back on my feet. I see the Lord break the shackles off of him. He said, I'm so tired of running. I'm a man without a home. You see, this wicked world can never help you when you're empty and alone. He said, I want my family back. I'm tired of living on the street. Help me get down on my knees so I can get back on my feet. Friend, I've hit rock bottom. Not a nickel to my name. I've thrown away what God gave me. I've got only me to blame. Said every day is a battle when your heart is incomplete. Lord, help me get down on my knees so I can get back on my feet. You see, every day is a battle when your heart is incomplete. Lord, help me get down on my knees I can get back on my feet. Lord, help me get down on my knees. So I can get back on my feet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Give me one more song, a little up-tempo something tonight there, Mr. Leonard. Come on, worship with me tonight. Let's talk about the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah, that upper room experience. How many know the Holy Ghost is an upper room experience? Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing about Him tonight. Glory to God. Here we go. Jesus stood on the great day of the feast and began to preach. He said, if any man should thirst, let him come to me and drink. And out of his belly shall rivers of living water flow. Right there he made me a promise to pour out the Holy Ghost. He ain't just for a selected few, he's for one and all. For all those who believe in Christ that will answer when He calls. A hundred and twenty believers were gathered in one accord. They were waiting on the promise as commanded by our Lord. Listen. 
the four ascended and he told them, you go and wait in Jerusalem, and there you receive the power to be witnesses to men. And as they tarried in the upper room, they heard a mighty sound. Well, the wind blew in, the fire lit up, as the Holy Ghost rained down. Yes, the Holy Ghost came down that day like a mighty Russian wind. There were tongues of fire coming from the room as he sent on each of them. You see, the church received its power to do the miracles of God. We need an upper room experience down here one more time. church on a normal Sunday night. I was praying at the back door. I was praying with all my might. And all at once the Holy Ghost swept into the place. He took control of my tongue as a magnet by Jesus' name. Ever since that wonderful day my life ain't been the same. Well, I now have the power to witness as Jesus I proclaim. Yes, and the Holy Ghost came down that day like a mighty rushing wind. There were tongues of fire coming from the room as he said on each of them. The church received its power to do the miracles of God. We need enough for room experience down here one more time. Well, we need enough for room experience down here one more time. glory tonight. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you'll give me about 20 minutes on the floor. Give me about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes on the floor. Dear God, I love him tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Put me in that radical crowd. I don't care. Put me in that crowd where folks just worship and they don't care what nobody says. Put me in that crowd where people just lift him up and live for him and they don't care what the world's opinions are. Are y'all with me in that crowd tonight? Hallelujah. I want you to go with me just for a short period of time tonight. I feel that God would have me deliver this to this church. Psalms Gospel 140. Go with me. Hallelujah. How many of you understand tonight that your God will keep you? Turn to your neighbor and say, He will maintenance you. You know, machinery even has to be maintenanced. You have to keep gears greased up and oiled. Motors have to have the oil changed. Tires have to be rotated. Maintenance, plugs put in. Used to be points, but you got electronic ignition now. There ain't no such thing as a point unless you got a 60s or a 70 model car. Oh, somebody help me. Turn and look at your neighbor and say, the maintenance man's in the house tonight. The one that will preserve you. Hallelujah. Anybody understand what preservation is? To preserve me. I want you to understand this. You didn't get this far by yourself. I have people all the time say, boy, I've come through the storms. and I've come through the rain. You didn't come through nothing. If it had not been for the Lord which is on your side, you would have never made it this far. Dear God, help me preach. 
Had it not been for Jesus, Mary's precious lamb, and the royal diadem of heaven, the one the Bible declares to be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, and King of Kings, if the preserving power of God had not been upon you, the first attack would have done killed you. How many tonight say the sickness didn't take me out because the great physician was with me? The car wreck didn't kill me because the one that says he's my comforter is with me. That strategy the devil had against me to kill me didn't kill me because the one that says I'm a God of end time, on time, ever time God, I'm here with you, a present God, a present help in the time of trouble. If that God hadn't been there to preserve you or to keep you maintenance through it all, you'd have surely died. Dear God, give me somebody that'll just say thank God for the preserving power of Jesus Christ. Psalms Gospel 140 says this, and the writer says, Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Here comes that word, preserve me from the violent man. That means to keep me. Keep me from the violent man, which imagine mischiefs in their heart continually are they gathered together for war. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent, and adder's poisoning is under their lips, Selah. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who hath purposed to overthrow my goings. I know your pastor preaches the gospel to you. I know you've heard this. For the devil cometh not but to kill, steal, and to destroy. How many of you understand that those three distinct reasons is why hell is unleashed on you? physically, spiritually, emotionally, and financially, and come against your family. He's trying to kill from you, to steal from you, and eventually destroy you. But you're going to make it. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm coming through this. Coming through the fire, and coming through the flood, coming through all the animosities and the stripes of life. Keep me, O Lord. The proud have laid a snare for me. The cords, they have spread a net by the wayside. They have set gins for me. But I said unto the Lord, Thou art my God. How many serves Him today and calls Him God? Hallelujah. Thou art my God. Hear the voice of my supplication, O Lord. O God, the Lord and the strength of my salvation, Thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. Oh, God, I feel the anointing. Somebody shout, Preserve me, God, in the day of battle. Psalm 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and strength, a very present God, a present help in the time of trouble. Oh, I feel like preaching. Can I go on? It says, Grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Further not his devices, those wicked devices, lest they exalt themselves. Selah, as for the head of those that can pass me about, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into the deep pit that rise up against that rise not up again let not an evil speaker be established in the earth evil shall hunt and the violent man to overthrow him but I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted my God somebody shall I know I know I know this is not a figment of your imagination. Somebody shout, I know in whom I believe in. And I am persuaded that neither height nor depth, no things present, no things to come, no principality, no power shall be able to separate you from the wonderful love of God, which is now in Christ Jesus. One verse of scripture said, I'm persecuted, but I'm not forsaken. Might be cast down, but I'm not destroyed. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. To it all, I've learned to trust in God. I have learned to depend upon His Word. Shout it to God. Say, maintenance me. Hallelujah. I know the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and the right of the poor. Surely, somebody say it's of a certainty. 
Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. Oh, there's something about his name. The Bible said his name is a strong tower. And the righteous run into it and they are saved. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. David understood this. He got a revelation or he'd have never took out a giant. That giant was a man of battle. Some of y'all facing giants up in this room tonight. And the reason why the giant ain't done took you out is because you've been maintenance and preserved by the power of the great God calls himself I Am. You know, when God spoke those words to Moses, it was profound. When he told Moses, you go in there and tell Pharaoh that I am that that I am, said let the people go. What was he really trying to say? He was saying, if they need food, I I am their food. If they need drink, I am their drink. If they need joy, I am their joy. If they need peace, I am their peace. If they need strength, I am their strength. I'm Alpha Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I'm the God that shall not fail. Never lost a battle, doesn't know the words to feed. Shout if you believe he's the I am. Make that me, God. Preserve me. I had someone tell me, said, can you show me proof in the Bible where God is a preservation God? I said, I can go one man, one man only. But there's many. I said, which one is it? Methuselah. Well, what did Methuselah do? He lived to be 969 years of age. I don't know nobody that's lived under that time age in the last few days. 969 years of age a man lived. He must have understood the secret place and the preservation of God. It wasn't that Methuselah never faced anything. I'm sure he had his own issues. But he depended more on the Creator rather than the problem. He looked more to the solution rather than the crisis. Because he understood that in his God for every crisis, there is a promise. Somebody shout, I'm standing on the promises. Anybody standing on the promises in this place tonight? Anybody understand that you're under the shadow and the wing of a mighty God? The one that has never lost a battle and has never heard the word defeat. David took on a man of war with a slingshot and five rocks. He had to be preserved. The manipulating giant stood before him. Caleb under God, oh God, Caleb understood because Caleb knew he had to go send spies out to spy the land. And when he sent those spies, they came back with a report. We are in our own eyes as grasshoppers. They needed to understand that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was still living with him. When they came back with that report, Caleb scaled the people. I don't believe Caleb was a sissy boy. If he stealed the people, I don't believe he looked at them and said, Y'all be still now. <laughs> I got something to say. He didn't say that. Caleb understood his forefathers went to a battlefield and fought for a mountain that stood before them. God will preserve us to get to that place. They said, but we got giants in the land. Ain't it just like the church people? They talk more about the giant than to do the giant slayer. Come on. I don't know how I'm going to get through this, brother. I don't know how you're going to get through it. I just know you're going through it. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I do know who holds tomorrow. <laughs> David, talk to us. Give us a scenario, David. He said, The Lord has become my shepherd. I shall not walk. Made me to lie down in the green pastures. Let me beside the still waters. And he restores my soul. There's a rod and a staff that comforts me. Prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. And he anoints my head with oil and lets my cup run over. Yeah, 
I love the song Amazing Grace How sweet the sound That saved the wretch like me But my favorite verse of that song says Through many dangers, tolls and snares I have already come Somebody shout that's preservation It was His grace that brought me Saved us far and His grace will lead me on. But you don't understand my youngins. I got this old boy, Timmy, and he's a drug addict. Susie's done went and spent her life in vain. And I ain't even going to talk about Bobby. I've had people say to me, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Oh God. I don't know how I'm going to make it, brother. What makes your circumstance any different than Caleb, and David, and Shadrach, and Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel? Do you serve the same God living up in here? How many serves the same preserving God? A maintenance God. Paul said, when I'm weak, then am I made strong. What just happened to Paul? He got maintenance real quick. The preserving power of God took over his mind. That's why the scripture said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now back years ago, somebody said, what's wrong with the church? They got a thinking problem. Let me reframe this. Back years ago, there's a country saying, I'm going to flip this one around and make it a gospel. Yes, I admit, I've got a thinking problem. How many remember that? The church has a thinking problem because they would rather think out of their circumstance than out of the faith that God's given them to get through it. Delegation of faith. God delegated unto every man a measure of faith. Dear God, don't you understand that your God, when He gives you faith, He stands over your faith to preserve it and make sure that it operates in your life? You ain't in that thing but yourself. When Shadrach looked at Meshach, Meshach looked back at Abednego, and they said, Dear God, we'll surely die. One of them, no doubt, had to stand up and say, But we're going to have church in this furnace because the God that allowed us to go in here, He's going to show up. He told me he'd never leave me nor forsake me. He'll preserve me in amongst all the flames. Oh, God. And sure enough, I've had people say, well, it just by the time I thought it was going to get better, it got worse. That same thing happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When you get worse, when the worst gets coming your way, that's when your God stands to attention. Come on. You ain't by yourself. When seven times hotter a furnace would light up and the flames licking all around them and the heat alone was enough to consume them, a fourth man come walking in the flame. My God liken unto the Son of God who who is this man, they say, that the wind and sea obey? He's the Christ of Calvary, down on a cross for you and me. All my life to him has been given. All my sin has been forgiven. He's my only hope for living. Come see a man. It's Jesus, 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 Jesus. The Bible said it's in him. You live and move and breathe and have your very being. Revelation calls him almighty. Hebrews says author and finisher. Ephesians says he's a beloved. Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Zechariah calls him a branch. John says bread of life. Matthew and John calls him the bridegroom. Revelation says bride and moon and star. Mark says he's a carpenter. Luke says he's a chosen one. Isaiah, son of Ephesians, first Peter, calls him chief cornerstone. John says he's the door. And Isaiah, Matthew says he's Emmanuel. God is with us. Shout, he's with me to preserve me and maintenance me. Well, brother, they're talking about me. I read a verse of scripture just now. 
that said their tongue was a wicked device. <laughs> that the enemy has laid a snare to take me out. Sure he has. Because he don't want you happy, healthy, and walking in the peace of God. He don't want that. Oh, I feel the anointing. Give me somebody with a story to tell. And I'll show you somebody that's walked through the tormenting places of hell. Because the Bible says you're made an overcomer by the word of your testimony. And by the blood of the Lamb. I don't know why bad things come. It's just something the devil enjoys doing. But our God knows how to take a bad thing and get glory out of it. Somebody said, I don't believe that. I said, then why did the Bible say all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord? And how many love Jesus? And are the called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. 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 I told pastor I'm not going to preach long. I've really had to limit some of my preaching lately. I get cranked up and I get going and I know it's time to crank down and I feel the crank down button on right now. So I hope you'll understand. Till I get well, I'm going to take care of myself. Amen. Last time I was here, I had a condition in my leg from here down. Nobody knew it. There was a blockage right here it was restricting the blood flow to the lower part of my leg and my leg turned as black as my slacks. I let it go and 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 let it go like we all do. Till it got to the point to where I had to do something. And I'm laid up in the hospital over here at Nashville. And the day of my surgery, I told my old-fashioned mama, I said, Mama, you're just praying for Jenny. you got to understand, my mother has been through some stuff. She knows what preservation is and maintenance. My daddy died when I was eight years old, and she raised me and my sister and our family by herself. When my grandfather died, we moved in with my grandmother to help take care of her. My mother said to me, she said, when you get that surgery scheduled, you tell me I'm coming down there. She's an old-time devil romping, demon storm tongue, talking, pew flipping, hell shaking, Bible believing, saint of the living God. She's got a Pentecostal bun that sits about that high. And she'll shout in that bun and go, Whoo! I said, Mama, you just stay at the house. Everything will be groovy. We got great doctors in Nashville. Everything's all right. My wife's going to be with me. Some of the church will go, I said, when you schedule it, I'm coming. Mama, you're 80 years old. You can't drive. And you don't want to drive. My mama get on the interstate. There'll be catastrophe after catastrophe between Virginia and Nashville. She rides a little scooter with Dale Earnhardt's number on the front of it. I've got her in that scooter when she get down here at my house. I got her in that scooter and let her go, and she'll go through the aisles of Walmart. Man, she's got it in the wind. That bun, she, you can see it leaning. She's doing that. One evening, she cut around the end cap of some bleach and pulled off 50 bottles of bleach and turned and looked back at me and said, Why'd you do that? I asked mama, I said, why do you do that? She said, I lived this long to act this way. <laughs> Can't argue with that. So they brought her down. I've shared this all over the nation. My mama sat in the surgery waiting room. When I got ready to leave and go back into the operating room, she kissed me and she said, you know mama's got your back, don't you? I said, I believe that, mama. She looked at me, she said, but the Holy Ghost is going back in there with you.
Now, I have a little bit of a stipulation on when I go. I hope I don't ever have to have no more surgery. When I go in that surgery room, you can put that little gown on me that you have to pull it and hold it like this and walk. That's, that's quite all right. I put it on. I stood up once and my wife said, you have to tie that. I said, there ain't nobody here but me and you. She said, what if you have to go out in the hall? I said, then you just walk close behind me. I got up on that bed, that bed, that operating table. They said, go ahead. Man said, get up on there. I said, we got to put this toboggan on you. I said, you ain't messing up my hair. And the nurse said to me, she said, it is rules that we have to cover your head when we're cutting on you. I said, and my rule is, rave won't let me. Y'all didn't get that, did you? You know who rave is? She said, the nurse looked at me, she said, you fixed your hair like you was going somewhere. I said, I am to the operating room. She said, I'm covering up your hair. I said, you ain't covering up this hair. I argued with that nurse 15 minutes and the surgeon come in. He said, do you understand that this room is, it has been cleansed and, 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 and everything is just sanitary? You, I said, and do you understand? I took 30 minutes to get that pulled back like that. <laughs> so needless to say, I'm laying up on the table in the little gown. And my hair, just like it is tonight, they did not make me put a ball in. <laughs> I'm laying up there, and y'all know that stuff they give you. I call it go-go juice. You take it, and you just feel good. They had already given me a Valium before I ever got back there because I was so nervous I could thread a sewing machine and it run. I get really eased down and they pull this sheet between me and the surgeon. I'm going somewhere. They pull this sheet between me and the surgeon. You got two assistants up here. And he had already explained to me, he said, we're going to have to do a, a bypass on your leg and reroute your blood. He said, your blood has become toxic in your leg because it can't run through the circulatory system like it's supposed to. He said, we're going to do a bypass here like we do if we was doing it on your heart. Do you understand? I said, I Whatever you say, Doc, just get at it. They began to work on me, and, and, and they was giving me all that stuff. They, they gave me, and I just ease out. And I'm laying there. And I get real calm. And if you've ever been in that situation, you know, an hour feels like five minutes. So I wake, come up, and I'm trying, and I can see them still working, and that operating table was tilted like that. So I'm down like this and my foot's up in the air so the doctor can work on my leg. And I'm hurting in the lower part of my back. I think, man, I've got to move just a little bit so I can take his pressure off. And they're occupied up there doing their thing. And I try to move around on the table and I raise up. And when I raise up and look over that bed sheet, there's a slit about that long in my leg. I see it. And every time my heart would beat, the blood go... The doctor looked back and he went, oh, no, 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 lay back down. I lay back down, glory to God. I don't want to see that no more. <laughs> and he looked at me, he said, I can't give you no more anesthesia. He said, I, it took me a little longer than what I thought. And he said, no way. He looked right at me, got that mask on. No way, I can't give you no more anesthesia. You're just going to have to lay there. We numb you, we can't give you no more anesthesia. I said, that's all right, get done. So I guess he gets done. I'm laying there and I'm just thinking, man. All of a sudden I hear that nurse say to another nurse, I said, stop. I said, stop. She shakes her head no and she looks back at me, got her mask on. She said, well, try again. She puts pressure on that artery right there. Then stop. I said, hey, I'm back here. What's going on on the other side of that bed sheet? Oh, it'll be all right. Don't you worry. I said, I'm not going to worry. You're going to tell me what's going on up there. I bet they wish I was still in the sleep mode. She said, oh, we're just having a problem trying to make the blood quit. I said, it'll be all right. I said, well, that's my leg up there. I got to know what's happening. And you can't stop the blood? 
She said, well, for right now we can't. And Brother Bain, I looked up and I said, do you know there's a verse of Scripture in the Bible that will stop that blood? That girl, I, I seen her, she said, what you say? I said, there's a verse of Scripture in the Bible that will stop that blood. Everybody in the operating room, turn around and look. I said, by the way, are you a Christian? She went, uh, yes, which means, uh, no. And I said, it's found in Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 6. And the writer said, And when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said, Live, yea, when thou waste in thy blood, live. And when I said that and pointed to my leg, she looked over that, that sheet. She said, It's clotted. What did you do? What was that you chanted? I said, I didn't chant nothing but life-giving power. I said, The God I serve knows how to maintenance my body. He knows how to preserve me. He's joy when I need it. Strength when I need it. He told me the weapons of my warfare were not carnal, but mighty to Him to the pulling down of the stronghold. And your weaponry is the Word and the blood and His name and the power of the Holy Ghost. That is your power. Somebody shout power in Jesus. Power in Jesus. Power in Jesus. Power in Jesus. He's the only way. He's the truth, the life. He's the Alpha, the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. You can't outrun him. You can't outstop him. You can't burn him out and you can't flood him out. He's God when the lightning flashes. God when the thunder rolls. God way up in heaven. And God down in my soul. And I know God will always be God. He maintains me and preserves my goal. Somebody might say, why did you say that? Because the doctor couldn't stop the blood that my maintenance man did. Yeah. Woo! Shout glory! You love this, Brother Bain. She looked at me and she said, what are you anyway? I said, a Holy Ghost preacher. She said, a Holy who, what? She said, you say you was a preacher? Good looking nurse, but I'm married. She said, they told me you was an entertainer, an Elvis entertainer. I said, I do sing and preach about the king, but he don't live in Memphis. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I said, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the life-changing, life-preserving, maintaining, preservation power of a living God. I got to quit. Keep me, O oh Lord. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When I've done all I can to stand, Jesus reaches down His hand. Thou who calms the wave and water, stand by. When I'm growing old and feeble, stand by me. If it had not been, the writer said, for the Lord which is on my side. One writer wrote a song that says, I can't even walk without Him holding my hand. The mountains are too high and the valleys too wide. Down on my knees I learn to stand And I can't hear it walk Without Him holding my hand 
this all right? I quit with this. Being raised, and I'm shutting my Bible so you'll know that I'm quitting, which means absolutely nothing. Being, being raised, as the music plays, being raised in the mountains. We got a lot of snow where I come from. I came out of the mountains of southwestern Virginia on the West Virginia side. They would get lots and lots of snow and it would push it across the mountain. The fronts would come in and 22 and a half inches of snow it was a small snow at times where I come from. You say, dear God, it snows 22 inches. No, we're dead here in Smyrna. Y'all know how it is. You let Ron House on Channel 5 come on there. Well, over here, according to the Big Tron, we have a weather front coming in. Y'all look over and say, oh, woman, let's go to Walmart. Get the eggs and the milk. Bread. You go to Walmart, you can't find nothing. People don't clean the shelf off. How many know what I'm talking about? Unless you've been in this kind of weather and you come from up north, you don't know what I'm talking about when I say a snow just <laughs> happened like that and it dumps it on you. You really ain't expecting it. We was in a little mountain home back in those hills and that little Cherokee Indian granny of mine was such a fired up fool of the power of God, faith walker. I've often told Stevie, my son, I said, I'd give anything for you to met Mama. She was 75 to 80 pounds of dynamite. Had a little arthritic finger. It was crooked. When she'd point to you and say something, you didn't know if she's talking to you or the person over here. <laughs> Full of the Holy Ghost. Pair of God hit her in the Appalachian Mountains and the Appalachian Mountains of Pentecostal folk. In that little mountain church, Brother Bain, I, I have visions from time to time. I see it all over again as the saints would shout and dance. A preacher would take a tamarind, hit it on his leg, and he was a little crippled man, walked like this, and his name was Dagger, a pastor with the name Dagger. You better be a good church member. Dagger Hayden. He had sang, I got sweet heaven in my view, oh hallelujah. And I'm on my way, I presume. Yes, I'm on my way to that city. I got sweet heaven in my view. I'm, t I'm talking about a reality in serving Jesus. He'd say, well, you can talk about me. Talk about me all you please. But if you hear me calling out your name, it'll be while I'm on my knees. He's raised in that atmosphere. This big snow dumped about 22 inches on us. We didn't have time. Listen, we lived about 45, 50 miles from any kind of a big major grocery store. Had a little country market below the house, and it was shut down, man. Harold Smith was his name. He didn't go over the East End Market. New. No. He's at the house. He done been to his place and got his eggs. We didn't get eggs. His milk and bread. We got up the next morning, I'm telling you, the snow was unbelievable. My mother looked out and she said, well, there will be no work today. I can't get the car off the hill. I can't get it down to the main road and I can't get it across that mountain. She said, but the thing that bothers me, Mama, we may be stuck in here for days. I remember it snowed when I was a child. During that time, we were out of school a month and a half. Kids, y'all like that, wouldn't you? Be out of school a whole month and a half. They're going. My granny looked outside and she said, and we didn't get no supplies. Mama said, no, Mama. 
just came on us before. I said, we can't get out of this hollow. She said, well, let me go talk to him. Mama said, what, Mother? She said, let me go in here and talk to him. She went in the back room and shut the door, and it sounded like a revival broke loose in there. It was just her and God, and that Appalachian sang, and she went, Oh, Lord, would you pass my way, Lord, Lord. You could hear in there shouting, speaking in the, Oh, Lord, I've got a need, oh, Lord. She come out about after an hour and she looked around at us and she said, he said he'll be here at four o'clock. I'm very inquisitive. I said, who's going to come at four o'clock? She said, Jesus is going to come at four o'clock. Hallelujah. what she said. Mama said, Mother, she said, Well, he said he'd be here at four o'clock, but don't you forget, he said he had never seen the righteous forsaken, nor the seed of begging for bread. She had a little grocery list in her hand, and she had everything down in that list. She had held it up before God in that room of prayer. She said, One loaf of bread, one, the number one loaf, L O F B R E D. I don't know why she left the A's out. One o'clock, nothing. Cold outside, still flurrying. Snow just as smooth. Nobody went outside, nobody come in. Two o'clock, nothing. Three o'clock, nothing. But it ain't four o'clock yet. If God tells you he'll be there at four o'clock, you better get ready because he's not a, a God that he could lie to or the son of a man that would have to repent. By 3.30, I'm back in that little room of playing. And I'm thinking, you know, you get tired of as a kid thinking about stuff and then you get into your toys and you forget. And at four o'clock sharp, I heard a... I jumped up and said, Mama, Jesus is here! I went running as hard as I could run. you got to understand, there was no emails at that time, no Twitter, no texting. There's a lot of knee mail, but no email. There was no cellular device. Oh, you're not helping me. Even the phone lines was down. You're not helping me. Ice come before the snow did and paralyzed the place. I went running and that little 80 pound Cherokee woman outrun me coming through the house. She said, he's done just like he said he was. And she run to the front. And I remember trying to get on my tiptoes and look out the window pane. And when I looked out, there was no tracks on the porch and no tracks leaving. But there was a box with bread and milk and eggs sitting in it. Somebody said, where did it come from? It came from a God that knew how to maintenance and preserve his people. I'm going to tell you, if he turned the water into wine, he's the same God now. Well, I don't believe that happened, brother. We were there. We we were there. We were there. We were there. If he fed the children of Israel in the wilderness, put manna down, he's the same God now. I love that verse of Scripture that said not even their clothing wore out. That means every time their feet grew, the shoes would grow with their feet. He's a preserving, maintenancing God. He's got you covered. He's got it under control. Shout if you believe. Well, where'd that food come from? I bet your grandmother text somebody. My granny would probably lock you in an insane institution. If you could tell her now that there's a phone you could call anybody in the world on it ain't got a cord to it. And you can take it everywhere. See, we were natural born hillbillies. We had certification papers. Certified hillbilly. My granny, she loved when the possums and stuff would come out in the front yard, she'd run. 
grab a shotgun and I'll get this one. <laughs> get out there and get it. We'll throw it in the pot. She lived a common life, but she trusted a mighty God. I wore what they call an aspidity bag. You know what an aspidity bag is? It's a little it's a Cherokee thing. It's a little bag full of herbs and stinky, stinky, stinky roots and spices. And you wear it around your neck. It's supposed to stop nosebleeds. I know one thing it'll do to run your girlfriends off. <laughs> they don't want no sugar. You go wearing that little bag to school, I'll tell you that. And you had to wear it. Because she'd get mad at you. She'd say, you want me to beat you to death? You put that on your neck, you'll get well. She'd lay that on your chest if you had a chest congestion. She'd lay it on your chest. She said, that'll get in that lungs in a little while. I'd look at her, I'd say, I hope that God that don't, I'll die for sure. It stinks to hide him. Hush! She'd say, I know what I'm doing. About that tall. Slim little woman full of the Holy Ghost. Tonight, if you're sick, he'll heal you. I'm done. If you're walking through a battle, he'll preserve you and maintenance the calls I read. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. This couple sitting right back here. I don't know you from nobody, but I do know this. I know that the Lord's getting ready to visit your house. The Lord's getting ready to swing wide windows blessing over your place. The Lord's getting ready to show up in ways that you have petitioned heaven and asked him to show up. The Lord said, I'm going to leave a mark behind. You will see where my feet have trod and my hand has touched. There are things that you need desperately, stuff that you need God to bring to you. And God said, I'm going to deliver because you have trusted me. There are lives at stake and there's things that are happening that God's getting ready to change for your good and for His glory. The Lord said your prayers have not been in vain but He has heard your cry and He's getting ready to touch you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. He's getting ready to send an anointing It's going to go home with you. And God said my angels will be let out and when they walk through the place where you live, God said, I'm going to change some stuff that needs to be changed. Things that have bothered you for a long time, problems you have faced, and little irritating devils that like to hang around and keep the stink stirred, so to speak. God said, I'm getting ready to run the devil off. So you get ready. The King of Glory is going to show up and vindicate you in the face of hell. My God, somebody shout hallelujah. Touch, touch him with your faith tonight. And let him touch you with his power. Touch him with your faith tonight. And let him touch you with his power. Touch him with your faith tonight. And let him touch you with his power. Oh God, I feel that anointing. I feel Jesus in this church tonight. And he's come to maintenance you and to preserve you. He's come to restore you and heal you. Deliver you and prosper. And send what you have to have to make it. See, all you need is Jesus. I told you he called himself the I am. So whatever you need, he is. He's food. He's, he's food. He's water. He's money. He's joy. He's peace. He's a husband to the widow and a father to the fatherless. What do you need him to be? What do you need him to be? He'll be exactly what you need him to be. He'll be everything you desire him to be. He'll do everything you need Him to do. And the thing about Him, He's always there to preserve you and manage you. He ain't going to leave you by yourself. You can make it. You can make it. Can somebody say, I'm going to make it? 
coming through it. I'm going through it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to get through this. I'm going to hold to the unchangeable hand of God till I get to the other side. And I'm not talking about the other side of heaven. I do want you to go to heaven. I'm talking about the other side of the opposition. I know you're going to hold to his hand till you get through the flooded waters and come through the treacherous trenches that hell has laid in your path. Hallelujah. I feel him tonight. I'm about to pass the microphone over to Pastor. But I just want to make sure God's through. If you have a need tonight, he'll touch you and heal you. If you have something that physically that you need God to do, he'll heal you. If you need something financially, he will provide. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God that provides. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Okay. Jesus, I want you to begin to restore what the devil has. Oh, Lord. The Lord said in his word, did he not? He said, I'll restore the years of the canker worm, the palm worm. He's a restoration God. God, I want you to restore. God, I want you to get involved in the middle of that, that break, that, that tear, that, that hurt, that pain, that separation. God, get in the middle of it. Begin to pull them back together. God, heal and restore. In the name of Jesus Christ, you have heard the cries of a mama that loves you. And Lord, I believe that when mama's crying, daddy's crying, something begins to change in the atmosphere. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Dear God, I ask you and believe it to be done tonight, my faith. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, there's none like him. There's none like him. There's none. Oh, God, I feel that. Hell don't like what you're doing. He don't like it because you pick a microphone up and go to worshiping God and give God glory. But he's got to get his hands off your work and off your money. And that's not a, well, I hope the devil. No, that's a no the devil's going to. I ask God to preserve your business, maintenance, your work. That monies will come into your, the devil owes you a big debt. He's robbed and stolen created havoc, but he's got to get his hands off of your stuff, because God gave you that. That's y'all's. That belongs to y'all. That don't belong to him. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. I'm going to ask God to restore. God, I want you to give monies back that's been robbed and stolen. You demons of hell that have encamped around their life to destroy them. Get your filthy, dirty hands. In the name of Jesus, I ask you to restore and God return what the enemy has robbed. And Lord, you said if the enemy be found, he don't just owe us a little bit. But he owes us seven times what he took. I'm asking you, God, to return it sevenfold. In the name of Jesus. And not only, God, I'm trusting for you to send them financial blessing. But I'm asking you, God, to restore those children's lives. In Jesus' name, I believe it done. Amen and amen. Jesus. The Lord's word said, he said, when the enemy come in like a flood, he'd raise a standard. That's your protection plan. 
That standard is a shield of protection. Oh, God. I'm asking you, God, to put that protection around. Oh, kumasi babatatala do koshata. God, I want you to hold him in your hands, God, and shield him from the wind and the rain and the lightning of the circumstance till the hand of God brings completion to it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God, we believe you and trust you tonight. Above all opposition, did you need prayer, brother? What did you need God to do for you? I'm coming y'all's way. Send that healing God into that throat. Oh, there's a number. Return his voice. Heal him of the condition. In the mighty name of Jesus, we stand on it by faith. Come to my mother, there's an anointing. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Oh, God. Oh, Lord, I feel the anointing. I want you to take your hands and lay it on the lower part of her stomach, hon. God, I want you to remove those cysts. I'm not asking the devil to get his hand. I'm commanding him. God, I'm asking you for total healing and rest. We give you glory and honor. The great physician is in the house. King of all kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come if you need a touch tonight. I know we got to go. We've stayed a little long. I apologize. But he's good, ain't he? Thank you, Pastor Bain, for letting me be with you tonight. You folks don't forget to stop by our table. If you like chicken eating preacher man, he's out there. If you like the CD that has got put God back in America, we've sang many times on Solid Gospel. It's out there. It's all on one CD. Praise the Lord one more time that we sung all those turnaround songs. On the turnaround album, we've got that song, the George Jones song, the Johnny Paycheck song. Randy Travis did a song years ago called Digging Up Bones, I'm Digging Up Bones. Well, I've got that turned around, but we're talking about Ezekiel prophesying and the bones come up. 
took that old song that Leonard Skinner made real popular. I like that version called Sweet Home Alabama. We call it Sweet Home Hosanna. <clears throat> it's on a record out there. Charlie Daniels lives just up the road here. Charlie wrote a song many years ago called I'm a Long Hair Country Boy. You ought to hear my version of it. I call it Holy Ghost Field Preacher. Give them just a taste of it, Lynn, before I turn. Just a little bit. Y'all okay with this? Some folks remember this. Some don't. You might. See what you think about this right here. The original's Long Hair Country Boy. Listen, check this now. We won't sing it. People say I'm a no good, crazy as a loon. I praise him in the morning and I praise him in the afternoon. Kind of like the saints of old, I love to trust him and obey. I don't have to worry cause I fall on my knees and pray. I ain't asking nobody for nothing. Well, cause I can get it from God strong. Yes, I can. If you don't like the way I'm living, you just leave this Holy Ghost field preacher alone. You see the preacher man talking on the TV And he's trying to guide my soul Tells me to hold to a promise Trust Jesus and don't let go You see Jesus walked on the water I know that is true Next time you see him a come and walk And he'll be walking on the clouds for you and I ain't asking nobody for nothing Oh, cause I can get it from God's throne Yes, I can If you don't like the way I'm living You just leave this Holy Ghost field preacher alone Amen, thank you Pastor Bain's coming Stop by and get you some stuff We've got Amen Let's do it Now this is your daddy And he's a man of God anointed I want him to put his hand On the spot And I'm going to touch you right here God, Oh I feel the Holy Ghost running down my own Oh God I feel that Getting into that back Oh Lord I know what it is. The enemy is trying to put a sciatic nerve problem there on your body. You're too young for that. But I'm believing God to heal it all right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I feel that anointing. Give Jesus the glory. Stop by our table. When we leave from here, we'll be going down around Alabama for a few days. We've got a couple days off. I've got to go tomorrow. Jim Ed Brown passed away, and I loved old Jim. I'm going to visit the family and, and be at the funeral tomorrow. And then we've got some stuff to do Tuesday, and we're off Wednesday, and then we go back out Thursday. So when you go by our table, patronize our table, and uh, help us take that new project home. We've got two of them out there. Don't forget our fuel jug. We have lots of expense when it comes to the road, when it comes to gas taking care of just the overall thing of being out traveling. If I had a multi-million dollar company helping me, I'd never ask for an offering and I'd never sell a CD. God put that in my life. I'll keep my word. I'll give every CD I got away. But until that happens, I got to have help. So I'm just asking you to support my table. If you would sow a, a seed into that fuel jug, you're, you're helping me get to another one of them men that come give their heart to the Lord. I call him John John. 
Oh, John, John. What a testimony. If you, to see, if you want to see what John, John looks like, a before and after shot, it would, it would pay you to walk by the table and go to Lynn and say, Lynn, I want to see that John, John, that boy had heard that turnaround song, Give His Heart to Jesus. Big biker dude. I'll, he'll show you the before and the after picture. If you want to help me reach people like that, I have to get to them, so help me with my fuel. Maybe the Lord would speak to you to sow a special seed. Thank you so much. Pastor Bain, I love you. God bless you, my friend. Thanks for letting me be here. We love Brother Steve. Give him a big God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, coming tonight. We want to thank uh, God for what he's done here today. Praise the Lord. Every chance you get, just give us uh, give a, a prayer for me and my family, for the church, and uh, for everything we're trying to do for the Lord. It's all for us all, church. It's for us all. It's not, this church is not just for me and my family. Me and my family can go anywhere. We can go anywhere. This is for you. This is for your family. This is, this is your church. I can pick my bags up and go up anywhere in the country and preach the gospel. I'm not bounded. I'm not binded here. It, this, this is for you. And I believe in God for you, for your, for your breakthrough, for your revival, for, your, for the greatness of the Lord to come uh, and touch your family and turn your family around and see that great revival. I'm, I'm not just wanting your normal church. I want that revival church. I want to see God move. But before God can move, you have to move. Faith requires moving for God when you don't know what else to do. There's been many times I've moved for God and didn't know what was going to happen to me and my family. But I, I took that move, and God has never let us down. Every time I've ever asked God's ever asked me to do something, I've done it. I've, he asked me to move to West Tennessee. I didn't know uh, the church down there wasn't really able to support me and my family, but I moved down there anyway. And not one time did we go without a paycheck. The whole nine years was there. Not one time did we go without. The whole nine years was there. I mean, I didn't know what was going to happen, but when I pulled up on the driveway, a little woman called Grace... We called her, her name was Grace, but we called her Gracie. And she had us a meal cooked in the fellowship hall. <laughs> Hallelujah. And from there on out, God took care of us. And we've been here uh, going on eight years. And God has took care of us many, many, many times. I can tell you testimony after testimony of people coming off the road, coming down that hallway, putting checks in my hands to make this church uh, you know, meet its budget. Church, we need to pray that God will touch you to the place that, you know, He's give you good jobs. He's give you good, He's give you good, uh, some of you know you make good money at least once a month. You know you do. Why would you hold out on God? When, when God is giving you that job, that, that means of of, of able to sustain you. He's been so good to you. Don't ever be guilty of holding out on God. Amen. Somebody just gave me some money here a while back. And the budget wasn't meeting here at the church, so I, let, I, didn't, I, I put it in the church. That was, that was a gift to me. That was supposed to support me and my family. But instead I had to do somebody else's job because they were holding back. I don't, I don't make $80,000 a year. I don't make $50,000 a year. I don't make $40,000 a year. Church, we all have to pull together. I'm not saying that you've got to do it all. I'm just saying we've got to pray and say, God, help me. Help me do the right thing. Help me take care of my church. Amen. Take care of my, the ministry that I'm in. Praise the Lord. 
That's what God is requiring for us to do. We appreciate everything you do. And we love and appreciate you. We would stand your feet. We're going to close with prayer and we're going to believe God. That not only are you going to step up to the plate and do what you're supposed to do, but but God's going to raise up a new generation, new people to come in here and step up to the plate. Amen. We shouldn't be running 100, 120 people on Sunday morning. We should have plenty of money to operate this ministry Amen. with the people that we have in this church. If you come in here this morning and you didn't give God God a dollar or you didn't give God a dime, how can God bless you? The, even in Matthew says, or, or uh, in the book of um, Malachi, he says if we don't pay our tithe, he says we're cursed with a curse, a double curse. If we don't do what God asked us to do, no, all we got to do is just do it. And you know what? I don't want to. I don't even want to. Uh, I don't want even want to budget you to to ten percent. You do what God lays on your heart. You do what God lays on your heart because you know what? That'll be enough when you do what God lays on your heart. We love and appreciate you. And you know what? You don't know what a preacher goes through or people go through that's trying to pay the bills. Until you've been there. When you got to turn around and give your paycheck, how would you like working for a week and turn around and have to pay the church's bills without your, your whole paycheck? How would you like that? I've done it. Many times. What I'm trying to say is I don't mind giving to God, but I don't want to be forced to have to give my paycheck back just to meet the budget. Don't get me wrong, we're paying the bills. The bills are being paid. But it's like stretching a rubber band sometimes because somebody is not obeying God. Amen. Today, somebody didn't obey God. I guarantee you that. You don't have almost 100 people and take up $300. Somebody didn't obey God. We need to pray for those people that's not obeying God. I'm not getting on to nobody. I'm not scolding nobody. I'm not, I'm not even mad. I'm just saying we need to pray for people to obey God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this service tonight. We thank you for these people. Lord, we ask you, God, to reach down your mighty hand and raise these people up to be mighty warriors. Raise these people up, God, to do something for you, Lord. Oh, God, to help you in, in the kingdom, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you stop the plans of the enemy in their lives, in the lives of these people. Oh, God, that you stop the hands of the enemy, that you turn his plans around. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, I pray you stop him. I pray you stop the plans of the enemy on this ministry, this church. God, we pray that you strangle the enemy, that you choke him out. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Give the Lord a big praise offering. Amen means in agreement. Praise the Lord. God bless you. We will be having church Wednesday night. We will be having church Wednesday night.